Welcome, Joanne. Good to have you with us. Let's start with uh, Roku. What are you hearing? What do you think? Well, Tyler, we're hearing, you know, I think something similar that's the, the you know, consensus today. It doesn't make a lot of sense for Netflix uh, to buy Roku. I mean, clearly Netflix has signaled that they want to get into an advertising tier uh, of their subscription, which would open it up uh, to more potential subscribers that don't want to pay that high monthly fee. And good for them. It's, it's probably a good way to go. Roku doesn't really add much. Yes, clearly they already have the advertising, so it might jumpstart it. But it doesn't make sense uh, to us for Netflix to to pay up for you know buying that into the business. And moreover, you know we're a little bit wary of this space. Uh, we do think there's a bit of a war going on between uh, finding subscribers becoming much more competitive, and then also buying content is becoming very competitive. And so that really does threaten margins, we think. And and then the battle for subscribers is really going to compromise growth, particularly in the short run, as these guys really duke it out. So not our favorite space to be in right now. All right. And that sounds like an avoid, Kelly. Yeah, sounds like it. But let's talk coffee. What about Dutch Bros, Joanne? Well, I love coffee, Kelly. But uh, <laughs> Dutch Don't Bros, I think, is facing some, yeah, Dutch Bros is facing some challenges. And, and in particular, right, their model, right, of having these sort of high calorie, sweet, sugary, cold, mostly cold coffee style drinks. Um, is really pitching them to a, a, a younger crowd. And the younger crowd, you know, may be more, become more cash constrained over time because of the high price of gas and food and everything else. So that could be hurting them. But in addition, they're having trouble getting labor. And for those kinds of drinks, they're much more time intensive than a straight up cup of coffee. I don't know about you, but you get in line behind five people ordering these foo foo drinks. It's very frustrating because <laughs> it takes forever. And so I think that's a bit challenging. And that's why they, you know, at their analyst day, they pulled back on their expansion plans. And so, you know, with the growth numbers coming down relative to when they went public, I can understand why JP Morgan would have downgraded them. But more importantly, this is also a space where there are not very large barriers to entry. When Starbucks first came out, it was novel, like a good cup of coffee and into a nice cafe, and you're willing to pay a little bit more. But now sort of everybody and their uncle can open a nice higher-end coffee shop. So I think it's a bit more challenging in this area right now to sort of maintain a moat, to be able to continue to charge high enough prices and get enough foot traffic that, you know, you're going to be able to expand over time. It's just yeah. a bit more of a challenging space. I just right learned, now. by the way, the difference between cold brew and iced coffee. It's very interesting. All right, final name, my favorite name to pronounce, Pin Duo Duo. Chinese tech company. Yeah, I mean, it's a, clearly one of the main players in e-commerce in China. Um, there's a battle going on in e-commerce, right? There are a lot more players there than, say, in the U.S., where Amazon really is dominant. So, you know, that's going to constrain them a little bit. They don't have their own logistics, and so they rely on others for that. But, you know, they're tied up with Tencent and their payment system, and, you know, that's a source of revenue for them. I think more broadly, though, when you look at China tech, what we're seeing and what moved a lot of the stocks today is China clearly signaling that they're going to ease up a little bit on all these regulatory constraints that have really hurt the tech, uh, the tech industry in China. So we prefer some other names in the space. We like Baidu. We like Tencent. You look at Baidu, for example, not only do they have the search engine and the advertising, but they have the cloud business. Mm -hmm. And we're still seeing an awful lot of growth in the cloud expansion, which I think will really help a company like that. Plus, we see China, the government, really has an incentive to take off uh, all of these restraints because um, they have 10.76 new graduates yeah. in China that have to get jobs. And they yeah. really need growth to come back in order for, for those folks to find Alrighty. jobs. So we can see this moving in a positive direction for China leave it, Tech. Got to leave it there. Joanne Feeney, thank you very much. We'll have you back soon.